And also, uh, guys, there's a lot of information about uh, business models, um, business incubation processes that exist. Just go, um, InfoDev has written a lot about business incubation. So I would look for those documents if I were you and read them and also make sure that everyone within my incubator actually reads do those documents so that everyone understands um, the process. Any web links for sample curriculums? I do not have sample curriculums right now, but I could look them up and we could share them within the uh, working document. Most uh, often who are unable to pay for the first few months happen to leave our space to get bigger private offices for themselves. What do you do to keep incubators at your space and make them pay for? So I would say it is about creating a relationship with them in the first place. So for us to be able to allow you uh, to be a free member, you first of all have to be offering something to us as a hub. You're not just going to use the services for free. So you have to be able to get something back from them as they are free in your space. So that even if they, after three months, they check out, you still have gained from that relationship. So have them do something if they are coming in on a freemium model. Don't let them just sit in there for nothing. And then there are certain things you can watch out for if they are able to pay. For example, if someone came in as an individual and after the first month, they've hired two other people, they cannot claim that they don't have the money to pay. At least let them pay the minimum fee, which is $50. After, as long as you see them get more people, then you'd be able to know. Then if you are structured and you have conversations with them, you would be able to see from their conversation whether they actually have any money or not. And if you've created a working relationship with them, they should be honest. It's a two-way kind of thing. They should be honest. But still, get something out of it by having them do something for you while they sit there for free. How long did it take you to set up Hive Collab and what were the challenges you faced? How did you overcome them? So first of all, uh, one of the challenges that we faced as a hub at the start was the ecosystem itself. 2010, the whole idea of innovation, uh, entrepreneurship and technology innovation was new to the country. So getting people to understand what we're trying to set up was a bit difficult. I can say we had 10 developers uh, for the first one year. We had basically 10 developers and maybe three businesses that were running. Uh, but what we did was start by going to universities because we knew our target people are people who have recently graduated, don't have jobs, and are looking to start. So we went to universities and started sensitizing people on what um, innovation is, what you could be if you started your own tech businesses, what tech businesses have succeeded within the country itself. Because we had people who had started tech businesses, they were just not in any hub. So showing them such success stories, uh, how the support would be like, we started drawing in people. The events that we started doing uh, promoted us to show people. Uh, for example, we hosted Mobile Mondays. We hosted um, different events for different organizations like Microsoft. If people know Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, um, they will come in. So that is how you gain ground as um, as a as an incubator who's new. The other challenge was funding. We did not have uh, that much funding at the start. Uh, part of our, uh, of our resources came from um, a, a software development consultancy that was closing. So we had furniture, internet, and all that stuff, but we did not have money to pay rent and stuff like that. And so we had to fund that ourselves until we got a first funder. And of course, funders will come in when they see success what is your impact in the ecosystem? So when they see that, they will start coming in. So you have to be very careful on being clear on why you exist, who you're supporting, and what impact is coming out. So tracking, m and is very important, tracking the impact that you're bringing out. If you, if you had maybe 10 people come into your hub, they didn't have any business idea, they just had a skill, you've supported them to create businesses, these businesses are now earning maybe $10,000 in six months, that is impact that you can show if you're a nonprofit to be able to help you get um, funding or you use project management. We, de we devise different ways of raising funds by doing project, um, managing projects for different organizations, looking for such um, uh, people who wanted to do events in Uganda and inviting them to our hub to host them. So offering such services was, was, was able to help us um, overcome some of the challenges and then of course businesses failing that is a challenge that you will face as long as you exist 
not all the businesses you support will um, will succeed. But be very critical in who you take in. Don't just take in because you need to fill your space. Take in businesses that will give you value or will make you, as an incubator, say, even if we had just this business, we would still be open. We would still open our doors to them because we believe in what they are doing. So we uh, we have uh, themes as Hive Collab, technology uh, for education, for um, health, for agriculture. So we are kind of supporting social economic development. And so when we see these businesses be able to solve a social challenges, a social challenge for us, that is success. And so being able to overcome different challenges uh, helps you or you're able to overcome different challenges. And once you overcome it, then you know how to, um, you know how to run with it when you next face your next challenge. Um, is it fine to ask incubators to pay some money so that they can take incubators course? Depending, is the course yours? Are you paying for it? Would they be able to find it online for free? If they're able to find a course online for free, then you shouldn't be able to charge them. But you can create your own courses and charge them for it. So depending really, if it's free, like Udemy courses or um, some free courses on Coursera, you shouldn't charge for them if they are free. But you can create your own courses and make your incubators pay for them. Or even the services, like uh, if someone pays $50, what does that $50 entitle them to? Uh, it could be you just get office space, or it could be you get maybe three hours of um, office hours with our business development person, or you can get a mentor. Different ways to raise money. But I would focus more on project management. Uh, but, but to be able to do project management really well, you need to develop a database for your developers or for your um, talent that you have. And also kind of create, um, what do I call it? Create a credibility around them so or a profile around them know them very well that they can deliver they are reliable so there are certain people who are really good but they're just not reliable so you know i wouldn't give those ones businesses build a developer database and then you're able to take in projects be able to do them and um and uh and uh earn from them and also your businesses are earning the other way is events attract businesses that are coming with, into your country to be able to um, raise money from that. How do you manage entrepreneurs in middle life crisis? There are developers who would rather not, rather do more outsourced jobs and focus on what, what, working on their business development. So at Hive Collab, we have freelancers. We call them freelancers. These are developers who are just not uh, focused on starting any business. They just want to do outsourced projects. And what they're basically looking for from us as a hub is a place to sit, uh, more talent. So let's say they've got a project and they don't want to do it alone. So they are going to ask us for our database and be able to hire the developers within the hub. So that is also acceptable for us. And that is fine with us, really. If your goal, as long as when you get in, you let us know, this is our goal. This is what we want. This is what I want to do. We are fine with you. So that goes back to a clearly mapped entry and exit point. Why are you coming to us? This is what we offer. This is what we expect from you. The devs indeed need money to survive, but the jobs do not permit them to focus. So depending on what that, or like if a developer is also a startup and they are focusing on something, that is now up to you to work with them and help them realize the importance of their business if you believe in it. So, but it, at the end of the day, it is their business. Give your focus to someone who shows you that they're serious about their business. As Hive Collab, we have so many developers, so many businesses that we work with. We will concentrate on you for two months. If after two months, you're not showing results and we see you're doing other things that are not focused on what you're supposed to be doing, then we will not really give you that much time because there's so many people that need the time and we do not have um, all the time in the world to offer people who are focusing on on their on other things but then again you have to realize why is this business focusing on outsourced projects rather than their own business is it that they don't have passion for what they are doing or do they not have the finances to sustain them in their business as it is growing like i said it is very important for you as a hub 
to help them have access to finance. If they have access to finance, and again, they are focusing on outsourced um, projects that are not related to their business, <coughs> then you have a problem there. <coughs> and you as a hub cannot solve it. But if their problem is that they are focusing on they are focusing on outsourced jobs because they don't have income, they don't have finance as an accelerator or as a as a business, then you as a hub need to support them, be able to identify ways of funding their business. How do you show appreciation to volunteers such as mentors, pro bono experts? Different ways. You can give them a honorarium, but that would be expensive uh, unless you have a budget for it. But um, most people want to give back. So one of the ways is uh, promotion for the mentor by putting them on your website. That is a good appreciation of showing them that we value your um, support. So for most of our pro bono trainers or experts, like uh, if Deloitte has given us people and they come in to do a training, we will actually offer them a honorarium, a very small thing to cater for their transport that actually brought them. So it's not a fee, it is just um, an appreciation. Um, let's continue this conversation in the learning document that we are going to share with you all. And uh, we can continue this conversation. The presentation is going to be shared. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have questions. Uh, that is all the time we have. But let's continue this conversation uh, within that learning document that we have. And then my email is barbara, barbara at hivecolab.com. Feel free to uh, send me any questions or any um, feedback that you may have. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening and